Okay, cool. Hey, uh, so I'm Victor, and I'm co-founder of Narrow.io, where we help uh, large companies to migrate stuff from AngularJS to Angular. And today I want to talk to you about upgrading large enterprise applications uh, to the latest and greatest version of Angular. The word enterprise, of course, is not well-defined. So what I mean by enterprise is large, ginormous apps uh, written by multiple teams for multiple lines of business, usually using different routers, different state management strategies. It's very hard to upgrade those at once, often uh, for business reasons. Uh, so what you need to do is do it gradually, so step by step, component by component, and that's what I'm going to uh, show you today. Uh, so I used to be at Google uh, on the Angular team where I worked on many things, uh, including DI, change detection forms, and the router. And I used to blog at vsafkin.com. So these days, uh, Jeff Cross and I are at Narwhal. So we left Google a few months ago, which is very sad, uh, to start our own company uh, called Narwhal, where we help teams to build successful with Angular. And these days, I blog at blog.narwhal.io. So you should check it out. Uh, check out our site to read up uh, what we do and how we work. Check out our blog, because we have high-quality Angular content uh, there. And also, check out our books. We wrote two books. One of them is about the router, and the other one is about the Angular core. And those are probably one of the most advanced books you can find about Angular on the market, which is really cool. And if you stick to the very end of the talk, I will give you coupons so you can get all this for free. Uh, so, hey, it's really good. I also have some hard copies of the router book, like real physical copies. So if you grab me after the talk, I will give you one. All right. Uh, the first version of the talk was very long, like an hour long. So it, like a few days ago, it was a long, an hour long. So I was trying to cut it in half. And then I found out it's only 20 minutes. So it's more than a half. So I will have to go really fast. So uh, be prepared. So if you miss a little bit you know, here and there, don't worry. That's fine. Um, it's fine. You know, I will share my slides. <laughs> so you can examine the slides you know, after the talk, or you can grab me after the talk, and I will help you resolve all your issues or answer all your questions. So that's what I'm going to cover. I'm going to talk about NG upgrade first, just a little bit, just a little bit. I'm not going to cover the whole library, because Pete and George have given an excellent talk about it in a few hours. So watch the talk. Uh, I'm going to just touch on it to make sure you're not lost. Okay. Then I'm going to talk about the two main ways to approach upgrade. And I call them vertical slicing and horizontal slicing. And uh, then I'm going to talk about even more, like an interesting aspect of upgrade called managing the URL. Uh, the URL is a global and mutable resource, so doing this is very tricky. So I want to show you a few things that you can do to make it easier. And finally, I'm going to show you, sort of tease you, uh, to, to show how to upgrade like a real pro, like with lazy loading, preloading, pre bootstrapping to make it super fast and super efficient. All right, upgrade. So upgrading individual components is what you do in the small, okay? When you have one component written in AngularJS and you want to upgrade it to Angular 4. Uh, so we have a solution, the Angular team has a solution for this problem called ng-upgrade. And that's what the library does. Basically, uh, this is your Angular application, an Angular 4 application. It's a tree of components. And each of these components has an injector, OK? And we also have an ng module corresponding to your application, and it has its own injector. And essentially what happens is when Angular tries to resolve a dependency, if it cannot find it in your component tree, it will get it from the module's injector. OK, that's simple. And if you use lazy loading, it's way more complicated, but you know, let's pretend that's not the case. You know, let's just pretend this is <laughs> the only thing we need to worry about, uh, because otherwise life is too harsh. Uh, so NG upgrade essentially what it does, it bootstraps an AngularJS application, an AngularJS one application, next to your Angular application in a very specific way, and sets it up in such a way that your AngularJS injector can see your NG module injector, so they can see each other's injectables, and you can interleave freely your AngularJS and your Angular components in one application. Okay, it's an example of how you can do it. Again, don't worry about the code. You know, it's fine if you don't uh, understand every single line. The point here is just to show you how simple it is. Okay. So here at the very top, we are defining our AngularJS application, our AngularJS module, with all the services and components. Then we define our root ng module that we are going to bootstrap. And after we're done bootstrapping it, we are going to bootstrap our AngularJS 1 application sort of from that Angular 4 application. Okay? Uh, that is th uh, the simplest thing you can do to bootstrap a hybrid app, not the best one. So if you have an interesting application, don't do that. But if you Google for it, that's what you'll find online. Uh, so basically, don't worry about the code. Just like, you know, ignore it. What's important here is that we have this capability, that we can mix and match AngularJS and Angular components. And the interesting question here is that how can we use this capability to 
in the most advantageous way. So what patterns and strategies we can use to make us, our businesses, successful? And there are two main ways uh, to approach your upgrade of your application, vertical slicing and horizontal slicing. Before we jump into those, I will show you one strategy that's useful regardless of which way you choose. And the strategy is called the upgrade shell. The way it works is like this. So you take your AngularJS one application, an existing one, a legacy app, or like I said, an existing application, and you take the root component of that application and you upgrade it from AngularJS to Angular. Okay, the rest stays the same. Or if you don't have an existing component, you introduce one, so you need to have a root. So the bulk of your application is still written in AngularJS 1. There is nothing there to, to test that's written in Angular. Everything is still in AngularJS 1. But technically, that's an Angular 4, an Angular application. And by the way, the dotted line here indicates a component that will be loaded by the router. Okay? All right. So there are many ways to implement the strategy. That's just one of them. So what I'm, going to, what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm defining a root component that has a single element in it, which has an ng view. So basically, our Angular app, our Angular 4 app, just renders that ng view, and then it bootstrap, bootstraps AngularJS 1. Then AngularJS and bootstraps its router, the router finds the view, and basically takes, puts some stuff into that view. Okay? So the, the whole logic of your application is still written in AngularJS 1. The only thing that Angular 4, the new Angular does, is renders one element. Okay? All right, now we know that we can wrap our existing application into this very thin shell. You know, very, very thin shell. Uh, the question is, how can we approach the upgrade of the rest of our application? And one high-level strategy that I recommend to use is called vertical slicing. And the way it works is as follows. So often it's not feasible or not possible to upgrade the whole app at once, uh, but you can do it route by route or screen by screen or sort of feature by feature. In this case, if you, if you look at the route, it's either written fully in AngularJS or in Angular. And one implication, one nice thing about it, is that you always have to deal with one Angular at a time. And Angular is a complicated beast, so you know, dealing with two is just sometimes a little bit too painful. You know? So having one that you need to look at and troubleshoot and debug through, it's actually a good thing. Okay? So every time we go to any screen, the screen is either fully written in AngularJS or in Angular. So another way to, to think about it is sort of like top-bottom. We're going to look at all top-level routes of your application, all top-level screens, we're going to take one of them and upgrade everything that's needed by that route or that screen, okay, from AngularJS to Angular. And this is a way to visualize it. So we can start with an AngularJS app. We upgrade the first route. And at this point, as you can see, we have to have two copies of the same component, one in Angular 4, another one in AngularJS. But as we go further and the whole application is migrated, those duplic that, that duplication goes away. So the upsides of the strategy are fairly straightforward. Yes, we need to deal with one Angular at a time, which is very nice, so it's easier to debug and easier to understand. Our migration or our upgrade is encapsulated to a single route. So if you have an organization with multiple teams from multiple lines of business trying to do that upgrade, doing this in this way where everything is encapsulated, so you can do it independently, is very useful. Often it's impossible to say, hey, I'm going to upgrade this button, and I'm going to force all of you to use my button. You know? For obvious reasons, they're like, you know, go yourself, you know? Like, I, I don't need to worry about it right now. Yes, I'm not worried about upgrade right now. So it's easier to do it completely independently, and this strategy allows you to do that. Finally, it's faster, like your applications are faster, because often if you go to an upgrade part of your app, you don't even need to load AngularJS or upgrade or your legacy app, you know? You can just deal with a new part of your application. The downsides are pretty clear as well. The first one is that if you follow this strategy to the T very closely, you have to maintain two versions of the same components from time to time, yes, for, so for a period of time, maybe for months. And it's very coarse-grained. So when you're trying to upgrade the first route or the first feature, it may take a month or maybe a couple of months, which may not be acceptable yeah, for your organization. The opposite of that strategy is horizontal slicing, or like upgrade reusable components first, or bottom-up. So we start at the very bottom, and we work our way up to the root of our application. This is how it works. So we look at our app. We look at all inputs and date pickers, material components, stuff like that, and we upgrade those first. Then we look at components that use those components, and we upgrade those. So we do it over and over again until we reach application component that manage state, and at some point, we're going to reach the very top of our application, and the whole app is in Angular 4. Uh, the implication, of course, is that if you open any screen, 
you will have to deal with two angulars acting at the same time, which is usually not problematic, but you know, uh, maybe problematic at times. And this is how you can visualize it. So you have an app, we upgrade the root and sort of you know, input some date pickers or material stuff. We go up, up, until the whole app is in Angular 4. The upsides and downsides are flipped, I mean, obviously. Uh, so the upsides are that it's easy to get started with, so I can upgrade a single component today and ship it to Pro tomorrow, so it's fine grained. Also, there is no code duplication. Every single component is either written in Angular 4, or in Angular, or in AngularJS. The downsides are clear as well. It's harder to debug and understand. It's more complex. It's not encapsulated. So if I upgrade an input, all of you will be you know, affected by my change, which may not be ideal. Then it hinders refactoring and tooling. So uh, Angular 4 or Angular is designed in such a way to enable static refactorings, you know, and all the static stuff that we enjoy. That's why TypeScript, that's why the templating language is the way it is. So AngularJS 1 is not like that. So when you use this strategy, when you upgrade reusable components, you increase the number of integration points between the two frameworks. And the downside is you lose some type safety. So if you start refactoring stuff left and right, like, like you may break your application. Finally, it may hinder performance. What I mean by that is, if uh, on any page, no matter where you go, you have to load to Angular, you need to ship more code to the client, most likely you have to ship your legacy, your existing app to the client, AngularJS 1, which is a large framework, to the client, so it is slower, all right? So those were the two main approaches to upgrade, vertical and horizontal. Now let's talk about managing the URL and why it's tricky. And it is tricky, mostly because it's a global, mutable object that the user can interact with directly. So when you have two actors, like two angulars, two routers, trying to you know, update the URL, you're almost always in a lot of pain. Uh, so there are two setups I see when it comes to managing the URL that I want to talk about. The first one is single ownership or a simpler setup. So the way it works is as follows. Let's say we have an app with five routes, OK? And let's say we use the vertical slicing strategy to upgrade one of the routes from AngularJS to Angular. So what will happen here, if we use this single ownership setup, is that every single URL or every single route will either be managed by AngularJS and the AngularJS router, or by Angular or the new Angular router. So every single route has a single owner, and it simplifies a lot of things, OK? There are many ways to implement it. One of them is uh, sibling outlet, the strategy that I like to recommend uh, to the people I work with. This is how it works. So we start with our top level component, and what it has is just two outlets. The router outlet, which is the outlet for the, Angular, for the new Angular framework or for the new router, and then GView, or if you use the UI router, UI view, which corresponds to, uh, basically it's an outlet for the UI router or the Angular 1 router. And the way it works is, at any point in time, only one router actually shows stuff. Yes, the only one outlet is actually uh, you know, present. The other one is empty. So you flip between the two when you navigate from the legacy part of the app to the new part and back and forth. So we define our root component like this. Then what we do is we define the routes for the migrated, for the upgraded feature, uh, as we do right now in Angular 4. Uh, then we need to tell the new router not to bother with, the, like with old URLs, because if you don't, if you don't do that, the, the new router will try to like, change the URL, and it's going to be like a shit show. So you want to avoid that. And it's easy to do. You just define a custom URL handling strategy, and you're just telling the router, hey, if it starts with feature two, if the URL starts with feature two, just you know, handle it. If not, unload everything. You know, someone else will take care of stuff. All right? Again, don't worry about the code too much. The point here is very, very simple to do. And I will point you to a blog post that shows you how to do it in depth. And all the legacy stuff is still defined in your AngularJS 1 configuration. All right? So mixed ownership setup. The mixed ownership setup is a bit more complicated, or like quite a bit more complicated. So what, how does it work? It works as follows. So we have a, an application, and we, uh, we managed to upgrade a part of it. But if you look at our URLs, we have URLs where one part of the URL is managed by the new router, and the other part is managed by the AngularJS one router. And it can happen if you have, let's say, an app where you show lots of dialogues. But the main app has been migrated, but the dialogues are still in AngularJS one, or vice versa. In the interest of time, because the talk is very short, I'm not going to go into details, but essentially you define another custom URL handling strategy where you define the extract 
and merge methods. And those allow you to pretend that the Angular just one part of the URL doesn't exist. So you extract the part you care about, and then when you change it, you merge it back. So you just like close your eyes and pretend that last part is not there. All right, the URL uh, is a good thing, but it's, it you know, creates a lot of pain for me personally, because it's global and mutable. And that's why managing it's very hard. There are many setups you can use in your application, and the two main ones are single ownership and mixed ownership. And obviously, if you can do the single ownership one, you should do that, because it's way simpler. There are many strategies to implement those two setups. And the one I like to use is sibling outlets, which, which actually works for both of them, for single uh, and mixed. And unsurprisingly, because the URL management is a subset of state management, all the considerations we have regarding the URL apply to state management as well. It's more nuanced, so I'm, I'm not going to go into details uh, right now, but it's like it's somewhat similar. Finally, I have a few minutes left. I want to show you sort of like a teaser of what you can do if you try to upgrade your app you know, in a hardcore way. In, in particular, what you need to do and what you should try to do is to do the, the following. So usually when you look at upgrade examples online, and there are very few of those, but if you find those, usually what happens there and what I showed you before is we bootstrap our AngularJS application right after we bootstrap our Angular app. Okay, so AngularJS 1, Angular 4, and G-Upgrade, your legacy app, your new app, is all together in one bundle that you ship to the client on load, okay, which is not performant. One of the coolest things about the new router is that what you can do is you can lazy load stuff transparently. It works really well, I really like it, people seem to like it a lot. So what we can do, we can put it legacy stuff, okay? The Angular J not legacy stuff, existing stuff, existing stuff. AngularJS 1 and G-Upgrade, your existing app, into a separate bundle, and not load that until the user actually navigates to a legacy part of your app, okay? This is one way how you can do it. It's a naive way, of course, it's more nuanced, so let's look at it real quick so you just have a feeling of how it can be implemented. So what we're going to do here, what we're doing here, is we're defining a new route, which is essentially like a sync. An empty path, uh, empty path route can act as a sync. So everything that we cannot match, we are going to assume will be handled by AngularJS 1. Like we didn't recognize the route, it must be AngularJS 1, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to load an Angular 1 module lazily. And that module looks like this. That module basically contains ng upgrade, it loads AngularJS 1, or it contains AngularJS 1, and it will bootstrap your AngularJS 1 application there. And it will do it only once, because AngularJS it's almost impossible to unbootstrap, okay? So it will do it only once, so when you navigate back and forth, the app will be present in memory, okay? So it will work fine. You can do it in this way, and essentially what we did is we took our AngularJS 1 framework, our legacy app, all the machinery for upgrading, and we wrapped it into a thin layer of Angular, like a thin module, which we load lazily. It's very beautiful. All right, so app size, it's very fast, yes? We don't, you don't pay any, any cost if you don't go to the legacy part of your app. Yes, it's as fast as an Angular 4 app, yes, so you should, uh, it's, it's really good. Another upside is that you don't have to download the AngularJS 1 and G-Upgrade or your, or your legacy app. You only need to download what's required to render your upgraded part, which is pretty cool. What's better, you can preload AngularJS 1. So the user can interact with an upgraded part, with a new part of your app, in the background, we're going to preload AngularJS 1, your, your, your existing app, all this stuff, all this machinery, while the user is still looking at the upgraded part of the screen. But we can do even better. We can pre-bootstrap it. So we can load all this code. We can bootstrap your AngularJS 1 app in the background. So when the user actually navigates there, it's super fast. It's like instant. One downside, uh, it needs to be thought through, OK? Uh, mostly because AngularJS 1 allows you so much flexibility that at times, it's hard to, basically, it's, at times it's just hard, you know. Uh, so you need to think it through. If you want to learn more, check out our blog. Uh, those are the two links you can use to get the books for free. Uh, get those today. The coupon will be valid today and tomorrow, okay? Uh, there is a blog post you can check out about upgrading Angular apps. You can look at that one. Also, I decided to write a book on upgrading apps because I'm doing it more and more. Uh, so if you go to that, uh, URL, you can find out more info about that book. Also, say hi to the booth. I have the books I can give away for free, and in general, I'm a nice guy. All right, thank you. All right. All right. Thanks, man. 
Okay. 